Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Swaggerty. We're gonna give the gonna give the sermon today. Um, it has kind of a funny funny title. The title is three sixteen. I know most people when you think of the Bible and three sixteen, you think of John three sixteen. Um, we're gonna delve into more than just John three sixteen. There's sixty six books in the Bible, um, but when you look up three sixteen pertaining to those. Um, there's 17 books of the Bible who don't even, that don't have a 316. But we're just going to look at 30 books today and the verse 316. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you for all the blessings you give us. Thank you for the Bible and for the wisdom that it bestows upon us. Please be with us as we go through this sermon today and help us to come closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we will start with John 3.16. And you could probably say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I, as I read the, the, the scripture memory verse this morning for Sabbath school, it was 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed and a useful instruction for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And that's what we're going to use today. We're going to go through the Bible um, and look at verse 316. Galatians 316. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many, but and to your seed, meaning one who is in Christ. And what that's saying is all of God's promises are coming through that one seed, which is Jesus Christ. Luke 316, John answered all to them, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Matthew 316, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and rested on him. 2 Peter 3.16 He writes the way in all of his letters, speaking in them about such matters. Some parts of his letters are hard to understand, which ignorant and un unstable people will distort, as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. And so, anytime you read the Bible, you need to pray, and you need to make sure that you're fully understanding. If, if not, you're going to go astray, similar to Romans 3.16. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And that's what happens a lot of times if you start to sin and go your own way. Genesis 3.16, to the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So that was the start of, of sin, and things were going the wrong way. Then in Revelation 3.16, 3, Because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to vomit you out of my mouth. So, it's telling you, if you're, if you're doing the wrong thing, God's not going to be there with you. This one, I think just because I'm a dentist, I, I was attracted to it. Lamentations 3.16, He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. When you read the, the summary of that, He's not really saying that he used gravel to break his teeth, but that gravel was mixed into the mill and it was in the bread. But either way, it has broken teeth and it's saying that if you're, if you're not following God, you're going to have a bad life or, or bad things could happen. But that would be terrible to have your teeth broken. Joel 3.16 the, the Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and heavens will tremble. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of the Lord. So that's saying that all we got to do is turn to God and he will be there as a refuge. Daniel 3.16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Um, I'll read 17 just so you, you, you know where we're at and we'll talk about it for a second. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. 
and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. And everybody knows that story, that, that, they, had, that they had faith in, in God, um, so much faith that they were willing to be thrown into a furnace um, instead of bowing down to, to King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and they, get, they go on to say, even if, we, even if we perish, that's okay, because we didn't do the wrong thing. Zephaniah 3.16, On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. Um, and what that is saying is, you know, don't fear and keep working with your hands falling limp. That's what they're saying. We got a couple of, of Bible texts where God does miracles with water. 2 Kings 3.16, And he said, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. The he that said that was Elisha. Um, there was an army going through the desert of Edom. And as I said, it's a desert, so it's hot. And, and God filled ditches or pools with water so that the soldiers could drink, so that the, the cattle could drink, so that they were able to move on and, and go into battle. And it wasn't a, a normal rain that did it. It was... There was no wind, there was no rain, yet the, the water was filled. And only in the valley they were in, no other valleys. Trying to turn my page. Joshua 3.16, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap of great distance away at a town, at a town called Adam, in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing from the sea to the Arif Arapa, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. So again, God's doing miracles with water. He was able to stop um, the river so that the, the Israelites could pass over. Exodus 3.16 Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you, and I've seen what you have done to you in Egypt. I'll read 17 as well. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the fiction, affliction of Egypt, unto the land of the Canaanites, to the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto the land flowing with milk and honey. Again, it's a promise. We've seen it, you know, in in. Joshua 3.16, we see it in Exodus 3.16. They're crossing into the promised land. And God is bestowing greatness upon them. 2 Corinthians 3.16 But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And what's that veil? It's a veil that covers your heart. And, and, a, and after that veil is lifted, you're able to, to understand the promises of God. Proverbs 3.16, long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Again, who is her? Her is, is wisdom. And where does that wisdom come from? It's following God. So it's saying, long life will be given to you if you follow, follow God. And, and that's in the right hand, so that's taking number one. And number two, in her left hand are riches and honor. Is that saying that you're going to live long and that, that you're going to be rich and, and honorable here on earth? Maybe. But maybe it's that we're going we're gonna to bestow heaven upon us later on if we follow God. Ephesians 3.16 I ask that out of the riches of the glory He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit and in your inner being. So, Again, if you follow God, He's going to strengthen you with the power, not muscle power, but an inner strength. 1 Kings 3.16 It took me a second to remember this story. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. And I was like, wait a minute, what story is this? Um, it's the, the story of the two women who came and it, it shows Solomon's wisdom. I'll say woman A and woman B or woman one, woman two. Um... They had, they lived together and they had babies near the same time. And the second woman, woman two, she rolled over um, in her sleep and killed her baby. 
So she took the dead baby and put it into woman A's bed and, and swapped babies while I slept. And once woman A woke up, she's like, well, wait a minute, this is not my baby. And so they went to King Solomon and, and brought that to him. And, and King Solomon in his wisdom said, bring me the baby and I'll cut the baby in half and each will, will get a half. And the, the woman A was like, no, 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 no. Don't cut the baby in half. It's better for woman two to, or woman B to get the baby than for you to cut the baby in half. And that's how King Solomon knew who the real, the real mother was. Because true love, you know, you kind of like in all the rom-coms that you see, if you love him, you let him go, that he, he knew that the, the true mother would rather have the baby live somewhere else than to die um, because what are you going to do with a half of a baby? It doesn't, when it makes sense. But Solomon had wisdom because he asked for wisdom from God. First Peter 3.16, keep Keeping a clear conscience so that those who slander you may be put to shame by your good behavior in Christ. Which is saying, you know, if, if, if you're keeping a clear conscience, if you're doing the right things, People that say bad things about you are actually going to feel bad about themselves for saying bad things about you. And so you don't have to do anything to them. All you have to do is do the right thing. I'll read that one more time. Keeping a clear conscience so that those who slander you may be put to shame by your good behavior in Christ. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord will be with all of you. So, the Lord of peace himself gives you peace for all times and in every way. And again, if you trust in God, you can have peace. Philippians 3.16 Nevertheless, we must live up to what we have already attained. And so, Again, that's saying the same thing. That, you know, you're Christians, you're living a, a, a worthy life with God. Keep it. Stay there. Don't backslide, but keep going. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? And, and so from that, so I'll stay there for a second. Do you not know that yourselves are God's temple? So God, and that God dwells in you. So treat yourself respectfully. Um, and from that, you you know, you always hear, you're God's temple, so you watch what you eat. But not only watch what you eat, but watch how you treat your body and what, watch what you do. Tied in with that is Leviticus 3.16. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering, a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. So I thought that was kind of neat how it's tied to that one. Um, he's not, this is not talking about fat that we eat or anything else. I mean, kind of is, but it's talking about tithing. Um, and that you need to, to tithe and give, give to God what is God's. Um, but it is important to, to eat healthy. But speaking of tithing, then you think of Malachi 3.10, even though we're going through 3.16s. Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tithe into this storehouse, that they may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. But we're talking about Malachi 3.16. At that time, those who feared the Lord spoke with one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a scroll of remembrance was written before him regarding those who feared the Lord and honored his name. So what that's saying is, um, people are starting to, to to backslide, as we said a second ago, and others corrected them and said, you know, no, follow God. And God took so much um, honor upon that, that he actually wrote a scroll, a scroll of remembrance. Does God need to write a scroll of remembrance? Probably not. He's going to remember them, but but that's so important that God is going to remember them and for them doing the right thing and helping others. Ezekiel 3.16 At the end of this, 
at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. And, and this next verse or what carrying on is he, the, the word of the Lord came to him and it said, go preach the word of God, which is what they said in Malachi. And, and if you do, then you'll be remembered by God. First John 3.16, we're going to make a complete circle here. By this we know that God, what God is. I'm sorry. By this we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Like I said, it's going right back to, to John 3.16. So, and I'm not sure if it's saying that we have to be martyrs. We don't have to be, well... We may have to be martyrs, but live your lives for others, not just for yourself. Acts 3.16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man who you see and know has been made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him this complete healing in your presence. Again, you, when you read, you know, a couple texts above, it's talking about the lame man sitting at the gate and he... He was begging for silver and gold. And remember they said, you know, they didn't have silver and gold, but what they have that they would give to him. And that was the healing. Um, and then he was walking and leaping. And I, I've been singing that since then. But I won't sing it today. Colossians 3.16, Let the word of God richly dwell within you as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Again, it's just saying, you know, have God in your life. Show it through, through teaching, through, show it through your wisdom, show it through your songs and your hymns. Um, and that is it. There's, there were several 316s that didn't quite pertain, um, but we did hit upon 30, a little bit fast and furious. But, I, I implore you to, to go through the Bible. You know, look at it different ways. You know, um, these are all the these are all the promises God gave us. You know, in thirty different texts and thirty different verses, just picking that same same verse throughout the whole Bible, and seeing that that God is going to give us great things and 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 He's going to help us. So that is my sermon for today. We'll close with a quick prayer. Um, dear Lord, thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Thank you for all the promises and, and, and being there for us. Thank you for watching over us and protecting us. Please forgive us our sins and help us to come closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Happy Sabbath.